I'm very grateful for my job and what I get to do. But when the pandemic hit, I think there was a moment where it was sort of like, are we going to be able to resume this? How long is it going to be before? Because we were one day shy of filming, of finishing our first episode and everything just came to a shutdown. Like the world did. And I, I realized how much I love doing what I do and how lucky I am to like meet these perfect strangers and to like play a part in their moments of self-discovery and growth over a short period of time, but it's a really intense period of time. Like literally everything changed. Their whole world gets turned upside down and then back up again. Um, so I definitely like, I had like a real moment of appreciation when we resumed filming a year later and when we were back and just to like see everybody buddy was just like so nice but also just from you know a standpoint of like being in texas um my boyfriend is watching the the season with me and i'm in it so it's different but to have an outsider's perspective he was like this is legit like my favorite season yet and i'm not just saying that because you're next to me but he's like there's something about the visual of the five of you in texas and going to honky tonks and like just running around Austin and, and like the outskirts. It's like, that's very entertaining. And I mean, the heroes, it's like hats off to the awesome, awesome casting department at ITV for, for continuing to just push the envelope on diversity, no matter where we are, there's no excuse not to continue to tell more stories and to find more variants and, you know, the American experience. And um, I think they knocked it out of the park. Like every single hero, Every, every single one of them has blown my mind. I haven't seen every episode yet because I'm like you. I'm like pacing myself. Um, and another thing is like I didn't watch. There are a lot of episodes that I haven't watched because I just get very judgmental of myself when I watch. And I'm like, oh, why do I always say plop that into the pot? But with this one, like I missed it so much. And it's been so long since the season has been out that like I've been like pacing myself to watch every single episode because I just want to see it all and it's also selfishly I just get to see you know my four castmates do their thing and um and see the experiences that they had with the heroes because we hear about it we all talk to each other about it but then to see how it all actually played out is 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 really nice I was gonna ask that because I I spoke to Tan about um re-watching the episodes and he kind mm-hmm. of told me that he's a little like hesitant when he goes back to to see himself mm-hmm. and I totally agree watching even you know just anytime I'm on camera it's a little different but yeah. I feel like this one has such moments that you have to go back and relive I mean the totally. the, the school episode is amazing I have rewatched that one already every single one of those kids just had like just such a fascinating story that I think so many people can relate to like it, it never gets old it never gets old. Absolutely. And I, and I, I don't know how much we can speak about just the heroes in general, but I know you met a lot of them and you alluded to a little bit, but can you just give us another kind of just what it was like meeting them and what you took away from these experiences in season six? I, I genuinely do feel that, you know, people will, someone was asking the other day, it's like, oh, what does it feel like to be part of like this person's growth and development? Um, and like to see them go through such a change. And it's like, I don't think about that too much because I'm always, I'm still so affected by what I learned from them. I really do think that it's a conversation and I learned that early on. It's like, if they're going to open up about their lives, we have to be willing to do the same. It's not a one-way street. It's a conversation, you know? And so um, that's something that just kind of like, just continues to, to, to blow my mind. Like I think of every single one of them, I think of all the moments we had on and off camera and it's like, I miss them. It's like, you make your, it's like going to camp. It's like forced, like forced friendships under the circumstances, but then you build these like bonds and they just come up in your life or, you know, there's a, whenever I, I, I pick up uh, grapefruit and avocado, if I'm making like this classic salad, I go back to like season one and I think of Corey Waldrop and like how he made this like vegan salad. And he was so fascinated. He was like, I have no idea that like grapefruits and avocados taste so good together. And I was like, it's a simple dish. Like they serve in a lot of Italian restaurants. I didn't invent this. I'm not going to take credit for it. Um, but like, I think about them all the time. I've never tried that combination, but I'm, I'm going to so have good. <laughs> Chopped chalet, a little bit of Dijon, fresh lemon juice squeeze the extras from the grapefruit segments that you cut, salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil. That's it. That's all. 
I was wondering, I went into this and I was like, I wonder if I'll walk away with a new recipe. Like I won't, I won't try for it, but like, I'll just see if it happens. And here we are. There you go. So going into food and just like the bond that you can create, you know, talking about it. I think that when we went through the pandemic, our, a lot of people's relationship with food kind of changed and, you know, we were making banana bread and TikTok trends and things like that. So Mm -hmm. When you went back into the season, did you have a little bit of a difference with food and your relationship with it because of that lockdown? Yeah, I mean, I've always had, um, food has always been kind of at the center of everything for me. And I think I definitely doubled down during the pandemic. Um, whether it was, I made a chocolate cake and I didn't have a stand mixer. I, I did Ina Garden's Beatty's chocolate cake, best chocolate cake I ever had in my life. There's a bit of coffee in it, in the cake and in the frosting that adds a little like necessary bitterness. I don't bake. I'm not, I, I don't like precision. I don't like measuring things out. Um, but it definitely kind of like opened my mind up to that. And I was like, oh, I actually have time to bake now. Um, so I think I just, I, I, I went in continuing to be open-minded. And for me, it's not about showing them whatever skill or whatever thing that I've picked up along the way. I mean, that does come up, but it's more figuring out like where, where do they stand with food? Is it utilitarian? Do they want to eat healthier? Do they want to get in touch with their roots? Do they want to have a romantic dinner with their partner or if they're single and they're dating? Do they want to plan a family dinner on a Sunday night and start that tradition? So whatever it is, <clears throat> I kind of take their lead with the information that I have. And then I just do my best to impart whatever I've learned from Food Network and cooking competition shows in the 10 plus years that I've been watching them and all the books that I that I've read I do love yeah it always feels like a different experience that we're preparing for and you know talking about your baking I'm one of those just like weird I don't know if this is not unique or anything but like I love to bake but I never use measurements because I don't use measurements in cooking either so I just right I I how does that work out for you if you don't bake so you have a good instinct (laughs) I try. I mean, not everything's a win, but (laughs) we see, we, we do our best. Um, There you go. Don't we all (laughs) going more into food. I mean, when you were in Texas, I, there was a lot of lockdowns, but were you able to try any dishes or get out there and see some stuff? Gloria's delivery, their fajitas. I would get like the family sized one or just double up on it. And it was like, cheap cheerful and like really hit the spot for like awesome tex-mex they're refried beans awesome suerte my number one favorite restaurant in austin they have a suadero taco s-u-a-d-e-r-o where it's like braised for 48 hours and then it just like it just falls and crumbles and it's on like a nice little fresh tortilla a little bit of cilantro and that's it and it was like the most unbelievable taco and we went whenever we could Sounds amazing. Were you able to, you know, see everyone on set and hang out with the Fab Five again? Did you guys really get to bond, even though we had the pandemic and those? Yeah, I mean, look, it's always different when you see somebody in person, obviously, but we kept in touch. Bobby started a group chat before we were even cast for the show, and we've kept it up. It's called the Fab Five. Um, And we were constantly sending each other really dumb memes or projects or whatever it was that we were working on and just trolling each other the way that we do so we kept really close but like to have you know tan hadn't sat in my lap in like over a year and so it was really nice to have that experience with him again you know absolutely and then now you got to see (laughs) the new baby I assume haven't met him yet but I'm really hoping that in the new year we get to meet little Ismail um hoping to make a trip out west but um yeah he's been really really busy on on daddy duty i'm very proud of him just you know talking about these these bonds that you made as a queer community i've seen this you know extend now internationally with germany and brazil talking about having their own queer eye Mm -hmm. series i assume you've known about this for a little bit but how was it hearing that news it's like how great is i mean the show is so much bigger than we are and the message is so much bigger than us as individuals and us as a collective. And when I think of the kind of like life that it's given me and the stories that I hear from strangers on the street about how the show impacted them, about just being more open-minded about literally anything, whether it's food or other people's sexualities or just the LGBTQIA plus population as a whole, um, 
I think it's like more is more and keep doing it in whatever country they want to do. I fully support it. We had, you know, producers come in from the different countries to like watch the way that we did the show to really figure out how to like replicate that, that formula to make it really effective as, as the show kind of gets franchised out into other countries. And um, it's an honor, like how you can, how can you not be grateful for somebody wanting to share that message, especially when you know how much it's affected certain people's lives. It's like, why don't you, let's, let's do some local versions of it as well. Have you been able to meet the new Fab Fives? No, haven't, unfortunately, but um, I'm excited to see the shows though. I'm very curious to see how they, how they go about each of their, their, their own roles. And um, I'm very curious. Me too. I think it'll be amazing. Um, my last question is just, you know, talking about you. I know you have a new cookbook out that just came out this year. So could you tell us mm-hmm. about that and how writing what that went? So um, my first book was Antony in the Kitchen, which was kind of like a culinary memoir of dishes that shaped me. It was a little all over the place, the way my brain is most of the time. And with Let's Do Dinner, the second book, um, which came out in late September, I want to say. Um, it was a focus on the life that I have now. I don't have as much time in the kitchen, but I still want to eat really good food. I've spent some time in Japan filming Queer Eye. So that's like heavily influenced kind of the way that I approach food as well and like the level of care that I put and usage of ingredients and what to put in. Um, so it's the food that I have for dinner, basically. When I I didn't want to make it too gimmicky and be like meals in 30 minutes or less. I love all those books, but that's just not me. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to just, you know, show people how you can have meaningful dishes that you can prepare for yourself or for somebody else, but not spend all day in the kitchen. I love that. I I haven't seen it, but I'm excited. I definitely need new cookbooks, so I will be checking it out. So congratulations. It's available. Support your local bookstores. (laughs) Yes. Important. And I did ask this um, to some of the other Fab Five, if you could try to describe season six in like one phrase, how, what would your, be your best shot at that? This was season six, right? Yes. Are you trying to do something punny? No, I'm not. I'm not clever enough to do something punny. I would have to ask my boyfriend. I would say season six, Queer Eye. You know what, with some of the editing and some of the jokes that we make, like we really made it weird. Because Austin's motto is like, keep it weird. And I feel like we we accomplished that. I think that's what Tan said. (laughs) Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm honored that I said the exact same thing as him. (laughs) Thank you so much for chatting about Thank you. I'm excited for everyone to see it. Congratulations. Same. Thank you so much. Like this video? Follow us for more.